Gravitational force also pulls. Despite that one book that a student found in the library. What would that book say? Gravitational force is a repulsive force. Oh. It was from somebody at a university in a third world country. Which doesn't make it wrong, it just definitely is outside the accepted truth of gravitational force. Normal force is a repulsive force. Normal force is what keeps one object from going through another. Some call it a support force. I really don't care for that term because it doesn't necessarily have to support in our sense of that word. Friction, when we draw the arrows, will actually be beside each other. Anti-parallel, which just means opposite directions. And in other, you're only drawing, since you don't know or care about what the source is, you only have one of them, so uh, that doesn't really apply. Uh, this is forces with respect to each other. One more column before we get to the exciting world of box falling. And then I mentioned before that uh, I mentioned specifically about gravitational force requires two masses. In general, force requires two objects. And so the forces with respect to the objects friction force is parallel to the surfaces of contact. And I do say surfaces of contact because it requires two objects. There's two surfaces that are touching. And it opposes desired relative motion. Tension is parallel to the taut rope chain. Other is problem specific. Normal. Anyone know what the what normal means in math? surfaces of contact. Been waiting to, I think normals use several statistics, which you can question whether it's math or not, uh, has a different definition of normal. But normal, as you get into calculus and beyond, means perpendicular. And then gravitational force Force points to center of mass or center of gravity, center of mass of other object. So right now, I consider myself that I have a mass about 100 kilograms. The Earth has a mass somewhere around six times 10 to the 24th kilograms. We are exerting a force on each other. They are both gravitational, it is a gravitational force because we are two masses, it does not require contact. And the force of gravity acting on me, or my weight, is pointed towards the center of gravity of the Earth, which is somewhere around the actual center of the Earth. And the force acting on the Earth is pointing up towards me. 
Now, the earth is pulling down on me with about 220 pounds of force, about 1,000 newtons, and I'm pulling up on the earth with about 1,000 newtons. Because my mass is so much less, it has much more of an effect on me than it does on the earth. But if I jump, I just push the earth away from us just a little bit. So, it, it has equal, um, equal, equal force is applied to both, but equal magnitudes. Points in opposite directions, but equal. Now I'm going to do force diagrams. The force diagrams will live with you for the rest of your life, or at least for the rest of this course and the next course. We're going to start out with box falling, or if you're feeling saucy, falling box. So first thing, whenever you're trying to solve one of these problems, it's helpful to draw it out. Uh, sometimes the drawing will be provided, sometimes it, I recommend you draw it out, and sometimes you'll just need to ask what on earth I'm talking about. But right now, I'm gonna draw, that's the ground. When you see the hash marks, that's re referencing something that is not moving. That's a box. We're ignoring air resistance, but those are sort of ripples in the air, which is not causing any force on the box at all, but this is a box that's falling. Or a box with this going. So this is the drawing of what's happening, and now in order to do a force diagram, I'm going to draw the two objects separate. So I'm going to draw a box, and I'm going to draw the ground. This is where I'm going to write my work. In this particular case, yeah, realistically, if this were a test problem, I would be doing it on here, but as a matter of process, I'm drawing it over here. What are the little signal things, marks in here again? Uh, an object that we're considering to be still. So we will assume the ground does not move. All right, so we now would go through the list and we figure out first, is there anything we can get rid of? For example, is there any friction to the problem? Is there any tension? No. Wait. All right, yes or no, it's one of those two. No. Got a no there? No. Ali, you were making an argument for yes? No. That's okay. No tension. Because I don't have anything pulling on it other than the no. earth. Yeah. Other? Did I talk about any mysterious force here? Not really. Not the line. The line. <laughs> yeah, it's just. A civilized falling. Normal force. Is there a normal force involved? Yeah. Falling just normal falling. Uh, normal requires remember requirement contact. Is the box touching anything? No. See how easy this is. You just put away eighty percent of the problem goes away. Yeah. Because they're all going to be like that, right? Gravitational force. Do I have a small mass and a huge mass? It's, yeah, the ground represents the planet. So I have a gravitational force. So what I'm going to do is think, all right, so I've got a force that is pulling down on the box. 
And if that's that force is down on the box, that's where I'm gonna draw my arrow. I'm gonna draw it down on the box. And then I'm gonna label it with what type of force it is. Specifically, it is a weight. So I'll just write a little W there. Forces come in pairs. So I'll put one right there using the exact same symbol. Ideally, the two arrows would be the exact same length. But since we're not going to be adding this graphically, that's less crucial than making sure it's labeled properly. And there's the first force diagram. <clears throat> now, rookie mistakes. Rookie mistake number one, the order changes every time, is... Uh, Putting the force on the source of the, of the force and not the receiver. Because it requires two objects, one is the source, one is the receiver. And so in essence, having it backwards. This, this would say that the weight is pushing up on the box. So if I took a box and let go, it would go up in the air. <laughs> uh, some people reverse the, where the air was going. All right, another rookie mistake. I've seen this way too many times. Putting the forces into no man's land. I'm trying to figure out what this person meant. I don't know. I can either take off for it or just ignore it and assume that they didn't actually answer the question. Now, realistically, if this is, I guess, not officially a rookie mistake, if give myself more room there. Yes, that's a no man's land, but I think I have a pretty good idea that that force goes with this object, that force goes with that object. I, I tend to be okay with that. Uh, not thrilled by it, but that at least it's clear. Or there's evidence to support that that is the force with that object, that's the force with that object. Are there rookie mistakes that uh, will show up as we go, and uh, some of you will make your own. So, way to be innovative. Preferably that kind of innovation. Do it in a different class. All right, any questions before we do the next exciting installment of Box on Brown? Oh, you bet. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Box on Brown. <laughs> Or is the ground on the box? That is a legitimate physics question. Okay. <laughs> I'm already there. Because if you've seen the video of the pithy physics expressions, one of them is forces don't play favorites. That there is no reason that, for instance, humans are not treated differently than any other object in terms of forces. It is legitimate. I'm not saying simple or convenient or even worthwhile, but it is, it is legitimate to consider that I have never moved my entire life and the world has moved around me. Self-centric, but yes, legitimate. It is, but if I were, if there did not revolve around me, why did my parents call me son? <laughs> All right, box on ground. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the two objects separate so that I have room for my arrows. So there's my box, there's my ground. I'm not saying the box is in the air. All I've done is I've drawn a box, I've drawn the ground. I don't have to draw them in the same orientation, but I strongly <coughs> recommend it. Since the box is on the ground, I have the box drawn over the ground right here. If you want to put the ground on top, that's fine. It just, to me, it, I'm more apt to make a mistake if I do that. I got the checklist here. 
Any of these that we can get rid of? Friction. But there's contact. But it's not, um, it's, it's not desirable relative, relative motion. There's, there is no motion. It's just on the ground. Well, not having motion is not reason. For instance, if I push on this table, the table's not sliding, but there's still friction acting on it. Oh, well, the, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so a situation like this, the question is, is the ground level? Does it look like I intended to draw the ground level? If it looks like I intended it, then assume that it is. So if the ground is level and the box is sitting on it, there's no reason for it to slide one way or the other. So there is no desired relative motion. You're correct on that. But it's just because if the ground is level, there's no reason for it to slide anywhere. Uh, if, so just please be aware, if I draw something and it looks like it might be a one degree angle, I'm not playing the game of a one degree angle. If I want it to slide, I will make it very clear it would slide on the ramp like that. It's not going to slide on something like that, whether that's perfectly level or not. All right. What else can we get rid of? Anything else? Nope. Do we have a small mass next to a huge mass? Yeah, gravitational force is still there. Was there anything in this problem when I said there's a box on the ground to indicate that there's an additional mysterious force involved? Uh, is there contact? Yes. Okay, so normal states. All right, so let's do gravitational force first. I think this is, personally, I find this the simplest, but as with a lot of things, the simplest is whatever way your mind is working, at that moment you need to use it. All right. So, gravitational force acting on the box, in which direction? Down. By definition of what down is. Down is the direction of the gravitational force on the small object. But, of course, it comes in pairs. Where's the other one? Uh, on. You get the same label. And that's it, that's the only, only one small object besides the planet, and so gravitational force is done. Normal force. All right, so normal force is to keep one object from going through another. There's normal force on my feet right now from the carpet to keep the carpet from coming up through me. And there's also normal force from me to the carpet, keeping the, me from going through the carpet. It is a repulsive force. So which way would that force be acting on the box? Up. Since my surfaces of contact are horizontal, it is vertical. And the other part comes in pairs. Down. On. If I took a box outside and I put it on the ground and then later picked up the box and you saw an impression of where I put the box, that's the force right there that causes the impression. I have only two objects that are touching, and so my normal force is done. Questions about box on ground before we do the next exciting, exciting installment of box on box on ground. It's about to get crazy. <laughs> box on box on box. We'll stop with two boxes. But if you wish to go for three, just for your own personal pleasure, do it. Rookie mistake. I've seen this too many times. who does this knows what he or she is doing. And even if you keep it separate, that's just bad practice. Uh, yeah, give yourself some room. If you're running your own paper and can't afford paper, I can provide some for you. There's some right there. Use the space. Now, 
Lots of lots on ground might not seem very exciting, but there actually is a real application for it. So let's do it. Lots of lots on ground. First, I'm going to draw my picture. I'm going to literally label that one A and that one B. If you're feeling like a rebel, give it different names. Just as long as they're not the same. All right. Do my force diagram. I am going to draw my objects separate from one another so that I have room for drawing my errors. I'm going to draw up my checklist. So let's first let's get rid of the the, the ne'er do wells. Any of these that we don't need. Yep. Yep. Oh, friction. Yep. Gone. Tension. Okay. We need we need both those. All right. Let's do gravitational force first. Let's see the oops. weight acting on A in which direction? Oh, what? I was going to say weight is not question. There is weight involved because I got a huge planet and I got small objects next to it. Yes? So if you're, you have gravity down, okay, and but the the no, what what normal force means it's contact so that means gravity is down but because they're on top of each other wouldn't it would wouldn't gravity also act up on from A to B so gravity would have, would affect so you're saying down on A and up on B yes for gravity but also like now is it possible for gravity to act two different ways on an object. Yeah, I mean, with any, you could have multiple forces act on any object in whatever direction you take the scenario. That's correct. So, okay, so, All right. so if the 